Welcome to The Consistency Club, a monthly podcast dedicated to marketing your photography business from the creators of This Can't Be That Hard. Each month on the 15th, you'll hear an in-depth discussion about a marketing strategy that's working well in the industry right now. Looking for even more support? When you become a member of The Consistency Club, you'll unlock access to the extended version of each month's podcast, along with monthly email and social media templates and bonus access to that month's secret strategy. Sign up at go.thiscan'tbethathard.com slash club to get started. Hello, Dana. Anami, how are you? I am hot. <laughs> Same. Okay, let's just get this out in the open. Guys, Anami's in North Carolina, and it is, what? what's the temperature today? Oh, it's perfectly fine out today. It's like high of 86. But outside. humidity. But the humidity. humidity is probably also 86%. I mean, it's always <laughs> humid here. And here, it is 111 degrees, but with no humidity. So... Honestly, I got to say, I would prefer to be where I am than where you are. <laughs> well, and I'm not even talking about outside right now. I am talking about my studio. <laughs> so my recording studio is in an office building near my house. It's only like a five minute drive, which is nice for convenience purposes. And it means that I don't have, you know, dogs interrupting me all the time and all that yeah. sort of stuff. But the room that I am in is eight <laughs> feet by eight feet. It has no windows. And in the summer, if the air conditioning isn't cycled on when I'm in here, it gets so stuffy and gross. And I'm just like, Bleh. so you're just like that's rebreathing your own circulated air. I know. Since uh, <laughs> y'all should come visit me here. <laughs> so advertising. <laughs> no, I know. Not good. But anyway, and I'm moving out of this space at the end of the month. So I will be at least temporarily back in my house, um, which has its pros and cons. You might hear yeah. dogs barking in the next video. <laughs> well, farewell to your studio space, at least for now. That was uh, definitely one of our best openers, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I am, as always, excited to chat with you and kind of dive into all things marketing for uh, for this month. We're We're here for July. I know. I can't believe it's summer. Like that feels like it snuck up on us so quickly. It always does. It really does. And, you know, we, I don't know, it's been like, you know, it's been six months this year. You guys have been really after it with your marketing. And at the beginning of the year, we did a marketing summit. We, you know, helped you guys plan out your marketing for the whole year. And we told you there's another marketing summit coming at the end of July. And that is like very quickly approaching. So yeah. Everyone mark your calendars on July 31st. We're going to be having our second marketing summit of the year. And this time we are going to talk about more like optimizing your workflow for the busy season. So at the first marketing summit, if you missed that, we talked about how to kind of plan out your big picture marketing for the whole year. And now as we're sort of approaching what is the busy season for most portrait photographers, we're going to talk about how do you optimize your workflow both so that, you know, you're streamlined, but also so that your marketing doesn't fall off. Because I think what happens is when people get busy, marketing is very often the first thing to go. And then looking forward to, you know, January, February next year, it's really, really quiet because you haven't been doing your marketing even through the busy season. So we're going right. to try to head that off at the pass. So everybody mark your calendars for July 31st for our second marketing summit. And don't forget if you are a member of the Consistency Club, your ticket to the marketing system or to the marketing summit rather is included in that. And if you are not a member, you can pay for a ticket to come to the marketing summit or you can join the Consistency Club and get your ticket included. That would certainly be my recommendation, it's all part of a big marketing package that um, that we try to pack way more value than what you're paying for. <laughs> Seriously, it's like <laughs> Into that. Yeah, so um, I'm excited. We are still finalizing our list of speakers, but it's looking to be an amazing, very inspirational lineup. Yeah. I will yeah. I will tease that little bit for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And speaking of, you know, joining the Consistency Club, we have a lot of new members this month. So I just want to say... Thank you and welcome to all of our new members. We love having you guys here. It's just like every single time I feel like we get a notification that there's a new member, it just like lights me up on the inside. I'm like, yeah. hi. <laughs> well, and like speaking of inspiration, like it is inspiring to see so many people kind of committing to their businesses, yes. committing to being consistent in their marketing, 
We have been getting a lot of feedback along with all these new members. In fact, we've got a fun one to share. And I kind of wanted to bring this one out in particular because I always like to remind people, not only are we dropping monthly content, but there's evergreen bonus content that's helpful whenever you need it, right? So the little testimonial that I wanted to highlight this month is from our member, Christina. She said that bonus content in the Consistency Club has me all sorts of fired up. Thank you. She was talking about the lead magnet bonus. So yeah, so much fun. Yeah. So just remember guys, there is a lead magnet bonus training in there and the bonus training on how to use ManyChat are in those in there. So go check that out if you haven't yet, or if you need a refresher. And there will be new bonus content following this year's summit. So, yeah, or rather this coming month's summit. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yay. All right. So it is summer. People are going on vacation. People are traveling. If you are on the other side of the planet, you are in a different season, but it's still kind of this busy, distracted period of the year. And The problem with that is that because it is the season leading up to the season that most Mm -hmm. of us are the busiest, if this period of time is, you know, let kind of go, if you're not actively pursuing your marketing, which is easy to kind of fall off the wagon on that, that's when you start to get yourself into trouble. If you're not getting the, you know, people booking for your busy season and if you're not getting them booking early enough for your busy season, right? Like none of us wants to be in a situation where come October, we're still fielding, you know, inquiries for sessions that are going to put us into crunch time before the holidays. And like, it is a much better scenario that you walk into September knowing that like you're 75% of the way there. So that's, we are going to be trying to help you automate as much as possible or make it as quick as possible to get high quality marketing content out there, whether you are traveling or you've got little kids who are not in school anymore or whatever the case may be in your life this, you know, this season. Yeah. And so I wanted to take this time while, like you said, everyone's on vacation, like it's a little bit of a, a weird time. I wanted to talk about, we, we, talk so much about sharing reels, sharing video content, just sharing content in general. And I realized that we never really took a step back and gave people a workflow for how do you organize yourself to get that content? Like, how do you actually shoot those behind the scenes videos? Or how do you organize your photos on your on your phone so that you can make these reels or these carousels or whatever a bit more quickly, because that is a roadblock for a lot of people. It's like sure. just the idea of like, I have to like go through all my photos and find the ones that I want. Like that in and of itself can be such a roadblock. Yeah. And then we were kind of talking about this just for like <laughs> your personal workflow. <laughs> it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> So if you have taken a peek at my photo Instagram, like my Megapixie Instagram, I have been completely inactive on there for like the better part of three years, which I'm not necessarily proud of, but I've talked about that on here before where I, when I started the education business and got really business busy with that, you know, at the same time, my photography business was like cranking out. I was having to turn clients down. I was that busy. And so I decided that, as like I had all these different balls in the air and something was going to drop, I was going to intentionally let the Instagram piece of things go because I didn't need it from a marketing perspective. It was taking up too much time, et cetera, et cetera. But what has happened is that over the course of those three years, I have gotten to where I feel really overwhelmed at the prospect (laughs) of trying to actually jump back into the game because it moves so fast. It, you know, like the amount of content that we accrue, I have continued to work as a photographer. Like I have tons, tons and tons and tons of photos (laughs) that I could be catching up with. But it feels overwhelming. So I was talking to you because you know all about this sort of thing about like, what are some best practices for kind of organizing this content in particular on my phone? I, you know, obviously as a photographer, I've got a workflow where I know where my photos are. I know where the good ones are. Like I have all that stuff organized on my computer. But what about when I need to move things over to my phone or when I need to access the stuff that's on my phone to then post reels and video and all that sort of stuff? 
Yeah. And I, I think to your point, one of the things that has changed in recent years or even months is we on Instagram, we don't want to only see the finished, polished product. We actually right. really want to see the process. So we want to see you walking to a location. We want to see behind the scenes of you shooting with a client. Like those are the kind of video content that we want to see on Instagram. And, you know, it, the pendulum has swung back a little bit away from like only video content being promoted to, you know, still primarily video content being promoted. And I don't honestly think that's really going to change much more because video is just so captivating mm -hmm. that, you know, I think it's here to stay. And so I preface this whole conversation by saying, like, get if you want to get your head around the idea of sharing more video content and you want to start upping your game in terms of sharing content that is not just your final edited images, this is a way to sort of lower the, I guess, barrier uh, mm -hmm. or like resistance to doing that. This is like the workflow that I would suggest that you do to, to make that a little bit easier. Okay, I'm going to get my pen and my notebook out. Okay. Take it away, Dana. <laughs> Teacher Dana is here. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I think the first thing that you need to, like, step one is you have to get the idea of getting, I'm going to call them B-roll. Like, so in Hollywood world, A-roll is going to be, like, what you're actually shooting with your real camera. And then B-roll is going to be the behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, it's the second storyline. So, you have to get the idea of getting this B-roll footage just into your workflow in general. So whether or not you realize it, you have a workflow when you go to a session, right? Whatever that is, like, I mean, uh, you you could probably say these examples better than sure. me, but whatever yeah. your, you know, your workflow is, you you know, you walk, you walk out to the, lo you, maybe you walk to the location, okay, you like do the light test thing, whatever that's called. <laughs> I've only been on the other side of it, guys. I don't know. You know, you you take a few test images, you mess with your settings, all of that stuff. You get your people comfortable. All of that is part of your workflow. So what I want to suggest is before you even get out your nice camera, have your phone in your hand when you, you know, are meeting from the minute you meet your client, whether it's at a studio or at a location, at their house, whatever, have your phone in your hand so that you can begin shooting B-roll footage like immediately. So mm -hmm. let's say it's in a client's home, like you walk in and, you know, the dogs run up and greet you like that could be, you know, or the kids come up, like all of that could be B-roll, you know, footage that you're getting or like, you know, as the, you know, whatever chaos is like happening in the house or let's say you're like walking to a location you can have the clients walking ahead of you. You can be getting a little bit of footage of that. One fun tip that I just learned is you can actually set your um, camera settings to 60 frames per second on your phone. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest you do that because what it does is it makes the video feel really smooth and like fluid and like really professional looking as opposed, it just is a little visually different than what mm -hmm. we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. And that stops your scroll, right? Like right. just seeing that sort of different. So yeah. So I want to encourage you to like start to think about doing some, sh some before the session shots and then add in a break. I'm sure you already do this, but in the middle of your session somewhere, as you're taking a break, whether you're switching cameras or you're switching like setups or whatever, in that moment, like give your clients a second to like, you know, shake it out. It's, it's intimidating to be on the other side of the camera for that long. Right. And as they're, you know, giving their kid a snack or fixing their hair or, you know, whatever is happening, walking to a different little location, grab some video of that. Like just as, the, as those transitions are happening or they're talking with you naturally, like you can just say, Hey, I'm just shooting some like B-roll for my Instagram, for my stories, whatever. And like, just kind of get that in the middle of the session footage into your workflow. And then again, at the end of the session, whether that's walking, you know, as you're like walking back to your cars or, you know, as you're leaving, maybe you can get like a, you know, every time you leave someone's house, you get a video of them like waving and closing the door. And as you start to figure out what your sort of um, like signature shots are, you'll start to like, oh, okay, let me get that that picture of people getting in their car or walking into the sunset or waving at me from their house or whatever the case may be. Yeah. 
just start to like figure out what your ones of those are and get that content into your workflow. That's the most important thing. It's like, you got to actually get the content, right? Right. And I'm just going to jump in here and sort of say for those people who might be thinking like, this doesn't work in my scenario, my, you know, my families are worried about privacy, et cetera. This can be as specifically related to the session that you're doing as you want it to be, or as you're comfortable making it, or you're, client might never see you shooting any of this. It could be that, you know, before they arrive at your studio, you're just doing a quick setup kind of a video or like, you know, getting the detail shots that you're, you know, once if you're in the middle of a wedding and you're, you've gone off to photograph rings or whatever it is on, you know, like away from your clients and you also do some phone footage of that. Like it does not have to be disruptive to your workflow. Yes. If that's something that you feel like you or your clients are not comfortable with, remember that when this gets sort of layered in with your professional photos, it's going to tell a bigger story. So think in that sort of cinematic way where Mm B-roll can literally be as simple as like the breeze blowing in the tree or like the gorgeous flowers in this particular, you know, this particular client's yard or whatever the case may be. Yep. Love that. That is, I I love what you said about, think about it cinematically. Like you all are artists, like think in that way you're telling like a little, you're making like a little commercial almost for this session. Right. So like, what are the sense, what are the things that are like invigorating your senses in that moment and try to get some B-roll of that? Which I actually think is a really nice way people talk about Film shooters talk about how shooting film forces them to slow down, pay attention, and really think about their shot, Mm -hmm. as opposed to with digital, where you can just kind of like (laughs) get really trigger happy. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) And, um, And make way too many photos. And I think that you know, again, I am someone who feels a bit of resistance when we have this conversation because I'm like, I have been doing this for 15 years and that's not part (laughs) of my normal workflow. And I, but um, as you know, three years ago, I started doing, using that one second a day app on my phone. And so now I shoot video all the time, like just little snippets of video. And so when I think about it as like, oh, if I were just to incorporate that into my sessions, And again, it wouldn't even necessarily need to include my clients. It's just little snippets of like things that catch my attention or whatever. If you're, if you become intentional about that, I actually feel like it opens you up artistically in a way that, especially for those of us who have been in business for a while, can tend to kind of get into that rut workflow that we have been doing for so many years that like sometimes the disruptor is the thing that can help us kind of reignite a little bit of that artistic excitement. Yeah, that creative spark. I love that. Yeah, I think the um, example to one second a day, if you guys know that app, I think that's such a a good analogy because you're right. You just start to, you just shift the way you like sort of are like thinking about your day and you're like, oh, I should grab a video of that. Yeah. So just put that same hat on when you're in your sessions. Love. Okay, so step one, check. You are getting video footage now at your session that's in your workflow. The next step is, to who and this is such an important one yeah call the video you take when you call the session or like immediate so like if you usually do that right after the session do it at the same time on your phone if you do it later but you'd rather do it right then on your phone just set a time that you call all that video because again it's so easy to overtake video on your mm-hmm. phone and especially i don't even just mean to like oh get rid of this video i like this one better Sometimes you take a really long video that's like, and I by long, I mean long in like Instagram terms, it's like a minute right. long. Sure. And all you really need is 10 seconds. And you know where that magic 10 seconds is because you just took the right. video. It's fresh in your mind. Yeah. But like three weeks from now, you're going to be like, what was this video? So do that. Trim your videos down. Delete the ones that are just like, ah, that wasn't anything great. Like truly your video should be like five to 15 seconds. And I would suggest you aim to have five to seven videos per session max. Like that is all you need from a session. It doesn't need to be a ton. Again, it's like a little bit in the beginning, a little bit in the middle, a little bit at the end. That's it. Maybe some ambiance shots in there, but trimming them down immediately and calling the ones that you don't need, that is going to really lower your resistance later Mm -hmm. to being able to make a reel because everything is ready for you already. Like it's ready and prepared. So step two, 
cull those videos and trim them down. <laughs> and then uh, in, at, after you're done doing that, take those videos, this is step three, and put them into a folder on your phone. So, you know, organization is unlimited on your iPhone. I would just suggest that you make each client their own folder. So, you know, if you're shooting me, it would be like, you know, July, Dana, and maybe like where you you shot the session, you know, like location or at, how do you organize? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to jump in here on this because I do have opinions about um, <laughs> organization. No. Well, they are opinions born of a long, long time of, you know, in fact, I look back and cringe when I um, look at my early years of running my photography business because things were kind of all over the place and I was <laughs> naming things differently. Anyway, if you guys don't have a really good naming workflow for your photo sessions, you need to dial that in. I name everything just to like give you the basics. I name everything by date and by name and by type of session. So I start with the date and I organize it backwards. So it's like 2024-0701 or whatever the date of the uh -huh. session is. And then the client's last name and then the type of session. So if it's a family session or a senior portrait or a, you know, headshot or whatever, that's the last piece of it. Okay. So that makes it so that, and then on my server, that's all organized in sort of like nested uh, folders. Then moving this same concept over to the phone, if I were to, you know, if I'm photographing you on yeah. July 1st and it's, you know, a headshot, then it's going to be 2024-0701 underscore shaf underscore headshot. And I would just name the, the folder on my phone the same thing so that it's easy to cross-reference, right? Love that. But I know that you and I were kind of talking about this before about how you were like, yeah, but what if I don't just want to put together reels or videos that have to do with a particular session, mm -hmm. but I want to like grab all of my headshot photos and put those together. And so yep. I want to grab like the best of from a handful. Yep. I think that I went into my phone. I was like, how am I going to do this? And if anyone listening has a better suggestion, please, please, please feel free to let me know. But in, I use an iPhone when I open a photo, if you just go to the bottom and hit the little I button for info, yeah. you know, the info comes up like your exit data and all that. And if at the top of that, there's space to put in a caption, there's mm -hmm. no, as far as I can tell, there's not like a super easy way to tag photos like mm -hmm. you do in Lightroom inside of your iPhone photo library. But if you write a caption like you were writing a tag, so mm -hmm. if I was tagging headshot or if I was tagging rainbows or whatever the case may be, and then I close out of that particular photo and go into my photos folder and search that term, any photo that has that in the caption comes up. So like I think that. that at the same time, you organize your photos, or rather you call your photos, you put them in a photo, uh, an album Beautiful. based yeah. on, the, or a folder, sorry, based on the same name as you use for their session in on your computer. Mm -hmm. And then you just go through those five to seven. I mean, we're talking about yeah. five to seven captions and they're just for you. So it's not yeah. like you have to use full sentences. You're just putting like a couple of keywords on each one. You will, if that entire process takes you more than 15 minutes, I'd be surprised. Yeah. And then later, that's going to save time. you yeah. so much time. So much yeah. time. But like, to your point, I'm thinking back, like when you were like, oh, there's like beautiful flowers in their garden, or you just said rainbows, like, you know, if like you just tag that and later you can then search yeah. on your phone and bring up all these things that have flowers in them. What a fun way to make a reel. So right. again, organization ahead of time to think about how it's going to make it easier for you down the line is, mm -hmm. is the key. I love that. Okay, great. I love that organization. And again, if anybody else has a better way to do this on their phone and Apple, if you're listening. <laughs> oh, they're listening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so dear Apple, we would like yeah. you to make a, our photos taggable. <laughs> well, and you know, I also imagine if there's not, I mean, there's probably an app for this at this point, but like, sure. you know, AI can search and say, here's yeah. every yes. picture you've ever taken of a rainbow. The question is, is AI going to be able to mimic whatever it is that you're thinking about? So maybe a, like an object, a noun is yeah. not necessarily going to be super useful down the road. But, you know, if you're like laughing um, or, yeah, or yeah. like tight connections or I don't know, I mean, whatever the, yeah. the phrase may be, use your artistic license in this. These are notes just for yourself. But I also think that, you know, when I am trying to 
look back at anything, photos I've made, things I've written, if I've only made a couple of notes and I and I, some time goes by, I'm like, what was I saving this for? Like, what am yeah. I even talking about here? So giving your photo or your video a little bit of extra context can also be the thing that triggers your brain down the road to be like, oh yeah, I was thinking I should make a, a reel about this. Yep, because half of the battle with marketing, at least visual marketing, is having the content that you need at your fingertips or your fingertips, in a place yeah. that you can, you know, where you can access it. So that's why, again, we're encouraging you. I do think this whole workflow from the second you like, let's say, you know, you get to your car, you call your images, you tag them, and I'm gonna give you one more step. I really think you can do all of this, like Anami said, in 15 minutes, maybe not the first time you do it, not the first couple of times, but again, as you get in the practice of doing it, it's gonna start to happen really quickly. So the last step that I would suggest you do right in the moment after the session, and I'll say optionally, you got to see what works for you. Let you, you've now like, you know, called those down, you've trimmed down your videos. If you use some service, like last month we shared with you guys social templates, which shares these real templates, or you have a real saved that you know you want to make, you can immediately just in that moment, go to your social templates, find a, an audio you like, and you're like right there, it's got, you know, what you want immediately just to make a reel or make the beginning of a reel. Like if right. you know, you're going to, if the, a lot of times in, um, in the social templates, it's like two videos and seven photos. And you're like, I want to use these two videos yeah. and I'll put these photos in later. You can start that draft or create the whole reel right there in that moment. And even if it's not perfect guys, like even if you're not adding the text, adding the caption, but you've got the video and like even some, maybe you snapped a few photos, whatever done. And it's now in your draft. Woo. That is like 80% of the work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So like, that's going to feel great that you have those drafts on there. And then when you're like, ah, I really need to share something, you go in your drafts and you have a bunch of 80% done reels for you, you know? Yeah. I can see so you good. being like, Oh, I hate this. <laughs> no, you know, the thing is it's, it's not, it's habits, right? And it's also systems. And what I like about what we're talking about today is this is sort of, these are the building blocks of adding a system into your existing system. Yeah. And the whole point here is to create more shareable content yep. and do it in as little time and with as little friction as possible. Correct. Because we are definitely working in an era where content creation is like part of our job, <laughs> like it or not. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I will, I'll be the first to admit, like I feel a little resistance <laughs> when I start thinking about this, but then I think about like all the things that have become second nature to yes. me, like writing emails that I know so many other people feel so much resistance about. And it's like, okay, the, the tables have turned. Yeah. I have to also like, acknowledge where my strengths and my weaknesses are. And in some cases, like, I don't want to say work against my weaknesses, but like work figure out how to get strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think too, it's important to just recognize that like with practice, you will get better at this. Yeah. And like, and you will have such a leg up on people if you can create a system and a habit around this. I know a lot of people have probably read that book, Atomic Habits at this mm -hmm. point, but the idea that he talks about that habit stacking where you like create a habit and then you create another habit on top of that, on top of that, on top of that. And then it does start to feel second nature. I mean, look, yeah. you can pay somebody to do this stuff for you. You're going to pay big money for it because nobody loves doing it because it, it can be a little bit tedious. And the longer you get away from the time that you shot the video, the more right. tedious it gets. I don't right. know what that visual is, but like, you know, so again, that's why I really want to encourage you guys to just add this 15 minutes right after each session to create this workflow for yourself so that it does get a little bit easier. And, you know, you mentioned this before we started recording, but to your point, if you have an assistant, this is something that you can assign them to do, right? If you, you know, have somebody that is like interning with you or helping you out in any kind of way or a VA, like this is something that you could teach a workflow on and like teach them how to do. Oh, definitely. I was going to say, so obviously if you have a photo assistant on a shoot, they can shoot B-roll for you. They can get video snippets for you, whatever. 100%. But yeah, even if you just have like a virtual assistant who is helping you with various things like putting, especially if you're using a service like social templates, yeah. putting, you know, sending them access to the folder on your 
phone yep. plus some photos, like they can they can be responsible for that. Yep. Speaking of, kind of <laughs> storytelling and because it is summer and people are traveling and all that sort of stuff, this month's email templates yeah. are very story driven. Yep. They are largely intended to sort of it's not like some big sales call to action. It is more of that, like building trust and sort of building connection with your readers. I love encouraging stories in emails because mm -hmm. when you can then t like sort of switch that over to a little bit of a lesson, it really hits home. And so I'm really excited for the email templates that I put together for this month because the hard thing, of course, is that like my stories are my stories and yours are yours. And it's hard for me to say like, well, <laughs> here's a story. Maybe you have something like that. But yeah. I actually feel like I came up with two scenarios that anyone has a story for this, um, this month and tied it in with like a little bit of a lesson that I feel like is universal in photography. So um, so I think these are going to be fun. I'm excited to dive into them. I, can't, I haven't read them yet. So you've got my Ooh. curiosity peaked. I'm excited yeah. to see them too. And Good for thing. the social templates this month, same thing. Nothing's really like very sales focused or call to action focused, but I spent a lot of time this month focusing on how do you create content that encourages people to engage with you? Nice. So whether that's like stories that are interactive or a lot of the posts and reels this month are focused on getting you new followers, getting pushing your content out in a big way or encouraging people to comment. So, you know, whether you use every single one of these this month or whether you sprinkle them in throughout the year, I think that um, they're really fun. And I'm also really excited about mine. Oh, good. <laughs> well, we will um, flip over to our members only content here momentarily. But for those of you who aren't members, don't forget you can sign up at any time at go.thiscantbethathard.com slash club. And if you sign up soon, you will be in in time to get your free ticket to the Marketing Summit on July 31st. We would love to see you there. That's it for this month's marketing lesson, but there's more waiting when you become a member. Visit go.thiscan'tbethathard.com slash club to join the Consistency Club and get instant access to the rest of this episode, your Mad Lib style email and social media templates, our library of bonus trainings, and this month's secret strategy. Again, that's go.thiscan'tbethathard.com slash club. We can't wait to have you.